I've had a couple of videos which involved the use of 3D printing. There's the 3D printed vortex generators, there's that little bubble for that quad, there's that weird flying wing pod thing, and the FPV racing quad frame. I printed that miniature longboard thing just to feel the design in real life, and that wing mounted angle of attack indicator. Oh, and I designed and printed this entire airplane last spring. Probably get around to a video on that at some point. All of those projects were made possible due to the generosity of my university to occasionally let me use their $6,500 MakerBot Z18. Well, I finally got my own personal 3D printer. As a disclaimer, Banggood.com did send this to me free of charge for marketing purposes, but I did ask for it specifically and turn down RC products for review because I think this tool will allow me to integrate more 3D printing into my projects and ultimately improve the content of my channel. It's also a fun learning experience, and I've been wanting to dive into the DIY 3D printing world for a while now. This printer follows an extremely popular configuration commonly referred to as the Prusa i3. However, this one is made by a company called GE Tech, and this laser cut acrylic version is under $400. It comes in a box unassembled. Every part has a part number and is cataloged in this book. It will take an entire day to assemble, but the whole process is pretty easy. It felt a lot like building LEGO kits as a kid. Just follow the directions on the video playlist online and build it one assembly at a time. It really was an enjoyable process, but you do have to be mechanically capable. And if you're wanting to build your own 3D printer, then you probably are. Just be patient and organized about it. There's so much support and community around 3D printing, and chances are that somebody has already designed and posted numerous printable accessories for your printer. Or you could even just print all the brackets to make another printer. If you haven't heard of Thingiverse, it's a website where creators can share the 3D objects that they've created and even share instructions on how to best print them or use them. Unlike this $6,500 MakerBot, which is only supposed to print PLA and doesn't have a heated build plate, this printer does come with a heated build plate and with the appropriate settings, I've managed to print both ABS and super flexible TPU filaments with great success. Some larger ABS parts can be tricky without the heated enclosure though. The standard most popular filament used in these FDM printers is called PLA, which is a biodegradable plastic made from corn, and is very forgiving and easy to print with, but it's very hard and it's brittle. ABS is a petroleum-based plastic which yields much stronger parts, but it can be tricky to print with. It extrudes at a much hotter temperature and tends to shrink and peel if you don't have a heated bed and enclosure. TPU is a thermoplastic polyurethane, and it's a soft, flexible filament. I've tried NinjaFlex, which is like super duper flexible and strong and resilient. You have to print it really slow and hotter than PLA because it's like a wet noodle and it's hard to push through a hot end with much pressure. It also comes in a less flexible version called SemiFlex, and there's lots of other manufacturers making TPU filaments too. Here I've printed some parts using PLA, SemiFlex, and NinjaFlex. You can see the PLA is rigid. Semi-flex slightly less, and Ninja Flex is like super duper flexible. And yes, they are watertight. There are several ways to use the printer to print parts, which includes the program Repetier Host, which you can use to connect to and control in real time via your computer. Or you could just import parts into a slicer and slice them and put them on an SD card. Slicing is the process of taking a 3D file and turning it into instructions for the printer to follow. There are lots of different slicing programs. For example, I'm going to use Slicer. While browsing Thingiverse, I see loads of cool things I can make. Let's grab this cool gear thing. I just downloaded the STL file, put it into Slicer, and exported the G code to the SD card. The G-code is just a big text file with like all the instructions written on it. It starts off with some setup information, and then there's just a series of coordinates to move to one at a time, but you don't need to know that. You can preheat the bed or extruder with some presets, or manually adjust them. A trick to loading the filament is to just cut an angle into the end, maybe bend it a little bit more straight, and if it gets stuck at the end of the hot end, just twist it until it slides in. Manually extrude to make sure the things are flowing properly. Just pop the SD card in the slot and select print from SD and find your file. You can even adjust the speeds and temperatures in real time from this printer, unlike the MakerBot.
You can also switch the filament mid-print to get some cool properties such as this PLA on top of TPU. I've been really impressed with how quiet this printer is compared to the MakerBot. There are also loads of accessories available for popular quadcopter frames. Perfect. I printed all of these on Hostway's Tweaker 180, and a whole freaking bunch of these landing skids. Carly printed a physical model of the black hole collision event detected by LIGO. I made this little sleeve to protect the screen on my Hero 5. I printed these jigs to help with making my own antennas, and Josue discovered his new calling is to manufacture these six lobe antennas. Am I in your way? No. Oh, and while I was browsing Betaflight configuration tab, I noticed this tab where I can select Bicopter, and of course I had to try making one of those. So I designed one real quick in about an hour and printed it. However, I haven't quite figured out the setup yet. Both servo outputs seem to be doing the same thing, regardless if it's pitched or yawed, so if anybody has any tips, that would be cool. So, I hope you've enjoyed that quick look at my new experience with this 3D printer from Banggood. It's been an awesome learning experience, and I hope to use it in lots of future projects. I'll link some helpful stuff down below too. Up next is some quad videos and this giant flying rectangle. It's pretty big. Is that big? It's big. It looked a lot bigger in my house. Does it look big compared to me? It does look big compared to you. Good.